In the last few weeks, uh, we had a discussion about family in general. We talked about children and their challenge for our families and society. And we talk about family in general, the importance of family in our faith. When we talk about this subject, obviously, the center of the family is the wife, the woman in the house. Because whether as a wife or as a mother, Woman is the center of the family and the household. This is why we have so much emphasis about being careful about the position of woman in family and society. Usikum bin Nisa'i Khayra, Prophet peace be upon him, in Hajjatul Wada and also in his Wasiyah. He is saying that be careful that you take care of your wife and the mother of your children. And then we see the role of woman generally in the history of faith and, and community. Even in the dua, when we are calling uh, Allah in the name of Ahlul Bayt, we look at Sayyidina Fatima as the central figure in our du'a. Allahumma inni as'aluka bihaqq Fatimata wa abiha wa ba'liha wa baniha wa sir al-mustawda' fiha. So you could say Allahumma inni as'aluka bihaqq Fatima wa bihaqq Rasul Muhammad wa bihaqq Ali ibn Abi Talib wa bihaqq al-Hasan wa al-Husayn. But you say, in the name of Fatima and her father, and the name of Fatima and her husband, and the Fatima and her children. So we keep repeating, like we put the, this holy lady of light and piety in the heart of our prayer. Because the Prophet, peace be upon him, he did the same thing when he said, "In Allah yaghibu lighada bi Fatima, wa yarda li rida." Is something that both Shia and Sunni scholars, all of them, they have it in their books. That if she is angry, Fatima, Allah is angry. Subhanallah, and this is nothing that I made up. This is hadith from Holy Prophet. It never exaggerates. He is the messenger of justice. If Fatima is happy, Allah is happy. If she is upset, Allah is upset. The Prophet wants to tell us that drop the culture of Jahiliya that had no value for women. Appreciate the role of moms and wives and women as members of the community. And this was very encouraging at the time of the Prophet, you know, the time that people, they used to bury their daughters alive. At that time, this revolution of saying that, like Omar was talking on the masjid, and he said that now we have a problem and the dowry level is so high. And he said, I want you from now on not to commit yourself more than 400 dirhams for the matter, for the dowry. A lady stood up, or she saw Omar after his lecture, he says, Oh Khalifa, didn't you read the Quran? He said, what do you mean? Yes, I read the Quran. He said, what about this verse? Allah said in the Quran that when you make a diary for your wife, hatta if it is qintara, means a lots of gold and, and a huge amount of diary, don't take it back. 
Leave it for her. So if Allah does recognize Qintar for the Mahar, who are you to limit it to 400 dirhams? Isn't it amazing that the wife can challenge Khalifa al Muslimin, the most powerful person in the community, and telling him that what you are saying against the Quran? Either you did not read the Quran or you are violating the, the rulings of the Quran. And Umar was so humble, he said, Imratun asabat wa rajulun akhta. He said, the, the woman is right and the man is wrong. I made a mistake. He said, whatever you want to give them, give it. I, I don't want to interfere. She's right. So you, you see that at that time, Muslim women were so encouraged to challenge even the Khalifa. So really, in, in Islam, we don't have this concept of man is more important or woman is less important. It's just like electricity, positive, negative. I mean, if positive and negative should complete one another, work together, then we have light and energy and electricity. Can we say like the positive is more important, negative is less, less important, there is superiority or inferiority? No such a thing. Both are important. And this is why even some Christian scholars, they have problem with some of the verses in the, uh, in the Bible that says the Eve came out of rib of Adam. Anyhow, God created Adam first. And then Hawa, Eve, came out of rib of Adam. They are saying that if you say like man is you know, central and woman already is second citizen or second gender from day number one. And there is another uh, criticism with the Christian scholars that they are saying that when the Bible says that the first sin was committed in the Jannah by Adam. It was not Adam's fault, it was Hawa's fault. Because Shaitan went to work with Adam, it could not fool Adam. And then Shaitan went to Hawa, and Shaitan fooled Hawa. He said, come on, come on, this fruit is so delicious, let's try it. If you eat from this fruit, which is very delicious, you never die. And you get the entire wisdom. And then Hawa was deceived by the shaitan. And then it was Hawa who went to Adam and said, oh, oh let's try it, so good. They are saying that the first sin was Hawa's fault, not Adam. And they are saying that is why like, Jesus did not marry and you know, didn't like the woman and then even in Catholic Church, then the clergy didn't marry, didn't want to deal with woman at all. And women, because of that, you know, uh, trouble that they made, they suffered till the end of the world. They have to go through the pain of pregnancy and all the suffering and, you know, monthly situation and all. They are saying that they deserve it because they caused this problem that Adam came out of Jannah and now we suffer till the end. This is one problem. While when you go to Quran, subhanAllah, in Surah Al-A'raf, there is no Quranic reference to say that it was Hawa's fault and she caused the main sin. Everything that Quran says it is about both Adam and Hawa, Adam and Eve. Ya Adam, uskun anta wa zawjuka al jannah. Fa kula, not kul or kulli, kula, both of you. Min haythu shi'tuma wa la taqraba hadhi shajara fa takuna min al-ghalimin. Fa waswasa lahuma. Quran doesn't say fa waswasa laha, la, fa waswasa lahuma a shaitan. لِيُبْدِيَ لَهُمَا Not لَهَا or لَهُ لَهُمَا مَا وُرِيَ عَنْهُمَا مِنْ سَوْآتِهِمَا 
و قال ما نها کما رب کما ان هذه الشجره الا ان تكونا ملكين او تكونا من الخالدين و قاسمهما نت قاسمها و قاسمه قاسمهما ان لكما نال لك و لك لكما من الس... لمن الس... الناصحين فدلهما نال دلها دله فدلهما بغرور فلما ذاق مش ذاق او ذاق ذاق الشجرة بدت لهما نال له لها بد لهما سوءاتهما سبحان الله everything is about both Adam and Eve وتفقا يخصفان عليهما من ورق الجنة وناداهما ناداها ناداه ربهما ألم أن أنهكما أن تلكما الشجرة وأقول لكما إن شيطان لكما دوه مبين isn't it beautiful in just a couple of verses at least 26 times Allah says both Adam and Eve that shaitan dealt with both of you both of you ate mistake both of you ate from this tree both of you were deceived by the evil so it's both problems there is nothing in the Quran to say that this was like how was fault but you know that the woman in history, even in this country, till 1920, in the United States, women could not vote. The, the sex revolution, gender revolution started in this country in 1960s. And after that, we see, yes, there was opportunity for women. But this opportunity brought the casualties as well. Yes, the ladies got better opportunities for social life, but then families suffer. We, we lost in family values. The ladies that are supposed to be al-jannah to tahta aqdam al-ummahat, they suffer spiritually and morally. The lady that Marhum Imam Khomeini used to say as Daman Zan Mar bin Mi'raj Mirabad. That means that the, the lap of a woman is a platform that men use the platform of lap of woman to go to paradise. SubhanAllah. It's a, man, a woman that can send not only her kids, but her husband. She can make everybody heavenly. But unfortunately then, we see that women suffered in, in this situation and morality suffered a lot. Even in the, in the Bible, when you look at it, there were so much attention to the spirituality and piety and modesty of women. Look at the Bible, even in this country, if some of you were in the United States in 1970, before 1970s, women, especially in Catholic Church, they could not enter the church without scarf in this country. Because based on the Bible, there is more than one verse that if woman cannot cover her head, she should shave her head. And since it is a shame for a woman to shave her head, so it's better for her to cover her head. Not only going to church without a scarf was wrong and sinful, but in general. But then everything changed. Not only in Christian community, even Muslim community. And I've been in this country for 23 years still, any time that I talk with the, with the ladies, with women, with the Muslim girls, still they are asking, about, what about hijab? Why Islam, why Quran says hijab is wajib for women? And there is no end to it, because we answer one generation, another generation come with the same question. And this lady, they get the answer, another one, like three years old, four years old, they ask about, why girls should have hijab? And we see that even some Muslims, they believe that hijab is an oppression for women. It's old-fashioned, it's backwardness. 
is humiliation for women, is subjugation for women, is not fair. Hijab deprives them from progress, from prosperity, from going to university, from having a sport, from uh, being number one in, the, in their career. And they think that really, yes, of course, we have the, the, the faithful who still they consider hijab as a sign of modesty and morality and protection for, for their personality and consider hijab as a spiritual liberation or spiritual discipline and, and an act of obedience. And they consider that when we talk about hijab, it's not just its clothes, it's just not the qumash, the material, it's just a, a little part of hijab is the qumash, the cloth. But that is even deeper, when libas taqwa dhalika khair, deeper discipline is the, the hijab of the heart. And of course then the, the physical la yubdina zinatahunna, that they don't show off their, their beauty, yahfadna furujahunna, kama yahfadu furujahum, to, to protect themselves and to control their desires, and show modesty and hijab even in talking, la taqdana, Bilqaul, don't be, be humble, even in, in your speech. Don't be too much in makeup, and be modest even in makeup and, and the appearance. And remember that there are so many girls that they can be number one in universities and sport. Don't you see these Iranian girls, they participate in international sports and they are number one and still they observe their hijab. You can be part of the government, part of the parliament, part of universities, hospitals. Of course it's challenging, of course it's not something easy if you are in like 110 degree uh, heat and uh, you know having hijab uh, but at the same time hijab for a Muslim woman in America doesn't have to be exactly like hijab in Iran or Abaya in Lebanon or ladies in Pakistan or Abaya in Iraq I mean you can be Muslim and you can have your own design of hijab in an American way that be modest at the same time beautiful and at the same time to, to meet the, the Quranic spiritual and moral requirement is possible. But of course life is a struggle. Nobody said that, you know, uh, uh, life is perfect all the time. That is why we are here to deal with the challenges and the struggles in life, our life. I saw last night I was in Troy, there was a big gathering. Dr. Bosch had invited more than 100 of the community leaders and interfaith and this lady, the U.S. attorney uh, for Eastern Detroit, uh, Barbara McQuaid, she was the guest speaker of this gathering. She's a lady. She was a professor, and she is a graduate of law school, and now she is the U.S. attorney in, in Michigan, the president of the United States. He appointed her in this position, and now she is a you know, decision making, and she's a lady. This opportunity exists for all the Muslim girls, Christian girls, Jewish girls, for atheists, for any denomination. Muslim women in this country, yeah, there are certain countries like in France now that the hijab is, uh, you know, in public uh, school or universities or governmental job, uh, you, you cannot have hijab. But uh, it, it is, it's a loan out. But at least in the United States, we don't have this problem. And the Muslim girl, they have this, this opportunity to observe their hijab and at the same time be advancing in education, in sport, in, in jobs, in, in all these areas. Because it is about intellect, it's about your brain, it's not about body, it's not about, you know, appearance. It's about the, the character and, and it's about your mind. Man is his mind. Woman is her mind. And let us experience and exercise this opportunity. House of Islam is one of the houses of worship, worship that is open for ladies. 
There are some mosques that say, well, a woman cannot be a member of the board. A woman cannot be a chairperson for, for a mosque. A woman cannot be a decision making for an Islamic organization. At least in the House of Islam, we never this problem. But now if a woman in the community, they don't want to take advantage of these opportunities, then they cannot blame anybody else. There was a time that the ladies, they were making ba'at. And they said, well, you know, the ladies are not for ba'at. And we said, yeah, it's not really your job that, to come and just make ba'at in the masjid. Don't make ba'at, but make something else. But if you are not doing anything else, and you don't want to make ba'at either, so what is really that you are going to do? At least do something. The same thing about our youth. I was talking uh, with Barbara, this uh, U.S. attorney, yesterday. I, I told her about uh, the Obama's message because in my way to Troy, I was listening to the radio, not to the radio, to my telephone, that Obama was talking on a telephone. They already sent a, a, an email from the White House that Obama is going to talk to you on the telephone and you can connect with number. And I tried that number. And he was talking about this recent Iranian uh, nuclear deal, and he was challenging the, the Americans to stand up against the warmongers and those guys who are against this deal, they are the same guys who were for war in Iraq, and now they want to make another war against Iran, and at that time they were saying the same fake stuff, and now they are lying the same thing and saying the same thing. And the president said that at least at this time, I'm on your side. At that time, you didn't have anybody in the White House to, to stand for peace. So this is your opportunity. Stand up and let your voice be heard before it is too late. Call your congressman. I called the congresswoman Dingell. I called some other congressmen and even that uh, Congress, uh, Jewish congressman who, who said that in the last 30 years of his job in the Congress, this was the most challenging decision that he had to make to stand for this deal because that was the best deal that we could get. And he's right. I mean, this is not a perfect deal. How you can deprive Iran from having atomic bomb? Well, if Pakistan has it, India has it, Israel has 400, how you can deprive one country? But now Iran doesn't want to have bomb, atomic bomb to begin with. So it's not perfect, but it's better than war, it's better than sanction, it's better than all the suffering, and it's a wise to do so. But now there are Republicans and some others in this country, and IPAC, they are spending two 20 million dollars advertisement. Even the Israeli ambassador was in Detroit a few days ago that one reporter called me and I said what I believe. He came to mobilize the Jews to stand against this deal. They say, we want a better deal. What do you mean better deal? Did you, first of all, did you read this deal? It's 159 pages. Did you read it? They never even read that. But they are looking for a better one. What do you mean by better one? Better one just death and destruction and war. That is really better in your, in your uh, theology and understanding. And Obama is saying that now you are just this Iranophobia. Iran has only $10 billion military budget compared to the United States, $700 billion. Compare, he said, compared to even Gulf countries, $150 billion, 10 times more budget for military than Iran. Then I told uh, yesterday the Attorney General, and there was a Jewish lady from the, the Jewish community. She came to me and she said, you know, Imam Lai, there is a fear in the Jewish community. I said, Brenda, this is not fear. This is sickness. Why, why are you scared? I said, what is your fear that you, are, you, have, you are afraid? He said, the fear of Jewish community. I said, you already have 400 you know, a nuclear bomb. And now you have the Saudis, they are like your puppets, right? And now you destroy all of this, you know, there is no Syrian army, Iraqi's army, Yemeni's army. Why you are still scared? I said, this is not, I said, Brenda, this is not fear, this is sickness. 
you know, because I deal with interface, sometimes I feel confident to say what, whatever I can say, because when you communicate, you can talk. There are people in our community, they never go out, they never communicate. They sit down in the basement and they criticize and they curse. But if you go out, then you connect and then you can say what you believe. That's the way it works. Why well, you are scared? Are you scared to burn that Palestinian baby who was only 18 months old? You heard in the news yesterday, some of these Jewish extremists, some of the settlers, they went and they burned one of the Palestinian houses in West Bank. And all the family members, they had to escape. One baby was in the room that was too much fire. They could not go to the room. And they were watching their baby of 18 months old burning and dying. He died. His name was Ali Saad. You don't hear anything from the Saudi about this case. Maybe because his name was Ali. They said, okay, <laughs> he deserves to die or whatever. I said, what about this? What is this fear that you are talking about and you're feeling it? This international amnesty yesterday announced, international amnesty, part of the United Nations, that last year war in, in Gaza, there was the Israelis, they committed war crimes against humanity. This is exactly what international amnesty said. War crimes against humanity. The Israelis say, oh, this report is not professional. What you mean is not professional. It's one-sided. Anybody who, uh, you know, doesn't say what you like, then it's not acceptable, it's prejudice, and it's anti jewish So it is the responsibility of the girls in our community and boys in our community. Maybe your parents' English or my English is not that perfect to communicate with a congressman and call them and send them email. Where are our youth? Don't you see that all this propaganda on email and online? Now they are there to kill a bill, an agreement which is about peace. It's our responsibility at least to come. We didn't ask you to take a uh, you know, gun and go and fight. We didn't say go to Palestine or Jerusalem. No? You have every prosperity and peace and safety and health, alhamdulillah. At least get involved, brothers and sisters, the younger ones. Call, send email. Go on internet, who are our congressmen and congresswomen in Michigan? And call them and send them email, go to website, go on their Facebook. Send messages. They are ready to answer. A couple of weeks ago, they said the majority of Americans were defending this deal. Now, two days ago, they said the majority are against it. Because of the media and propaganda, they play with people's brain. So that is our responsibility, and especially the youth. Boys and girls in our community, to get involved, to get engaged, and to stand for justice and for truth, it's not about only our own pocket. Attorney General was telling us yesterday that a man from, from the community, she was admiring our community. She was recognizing the contribution of Muslim and Arab community to this country. She was very happy about that. And that is why she accepted the invitation of a Muslim guru and came and she talked and she had dialogue and dinner with us. She was admiring us. But then she talked about that doctor that, uh, you know, using the, the false document and chemical therapy and he, he made $34 million for his own packet from the patient and from the insurance. And then you have one bad apple and then is a challenge for, for the image of our community. So we don't want our youth to go to university and get science and proficiency, but just for own, their own money and own power and or their own selfishness and greed. Let us share with the community. Of course, I told her that there might be some people that work with that doctor or that company. I don't know the details, but they were innocent 
I stood up in the public and I said it. I said, I have heard that cases that somebody is a doctor is working with this guy or with the company and seeing just a patient and has no idea about the money and the bills, he just gets his own salary. And now these guys are under investigation. And she said that we make sure that the justice is served and we are not going to the case of he must have known or she must have known. No, we don't go with that idea that it was happening in this place and this person should know about that. No, we are not for that. We are for justice. So I talk about the woman and this is one example that you, you see the, the space and opportunity for women. And this is not for only non-Muslim, it's for Muslim. You have this chance, brother and sister, the youth, to increase your education, increase your wisdom, but at the same time increase your engagement and stand for the good cause for this community or communities of, of the Ummah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wal asr inna al-insan illa fi khusr illa al-ladina amanu wa amanu al-salihat. Wa tabasabu al-hadu wa tabasabu al-sahab. Wa ila al-salati inna al-salati tamhani. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad.